What's up guys? Hedemius Dragon here. And today I'll talk about Tokichita, the Native American martial art down in Canada. Or should I say up in Canada. Today I'm going to discuss about the tactics, the history, and also where you can find it. So let's go ahead and get to it guys. I'm the dragon. Before I go into the deeper details of Okichita, let's go ahead and get a little bit of a Native American lesson, shall we? See, Okichita is basically the word from the Cree language meaning of where they meant. That means before men can become warriors of the Okichita warrior tribe, they have to do a certain thing to make them become a warrior, such as stealing a horse, or invading a nearby enemy camp, or, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know, find somebody you find them as a lover or whatever. Just what they need to do is try to prove themselves, or probably throw a hatchet from a distance. Prove themselves that they are worthy of becoming Okichita Warriors. Also, I have actually went on a Twitter and I talked with this man named George Lepin. Or Lepin. Sorry if I forgot if I got your name wrong, George. But anyway, I talked to him on Twitter. He said it's okay for me to do a little video about our Native American culture's martial art. You know, spread the word. Because the only thing about this martial art, which is Okichita, is that it's only native to Canada. What they're trying to do, what every Native American person who is a martial artist through and true is trying to do is trying to spread out the spread out that positive energy, the peaceful warriors, the Kikichita uh, warriors, bring it to everybody else, and then trying their very best to keep our Native American people strong and still in the history. Now, I'm not going to dwell on the history parts too much, but one thing I do want to let you guys know is that we're still here. And if you guys love this martial arts style, you want to learn how we fought back then, how Native Americans fought back then, and try to get this into your hand and try to figure this out stuff and stuff like this, guess what? You can go and learn that from Okichita. It's in Canada though, but they're trying to put, um, pursue their dreams by spreading it out everywhere. You know, making a last national sport like Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, Karate, all that stuff. So if you guys really do love Okichita or love Native Americans how we do, then go ahead and just look it up, find some techniques, some hand chop like my use skills such as this, you know, use rolls. And it helps out with the core. I mean as you guys can tell, I mean look. Not that I'm trying to brag, but you know, help out with core. You know, get yourself physically fit and active. I mean, really, I mean, it's, I'm not going to go into dwelling too much into this, but, you know, life is short, and you guys need to do the best you can to keep yourselves living fit, to stay and protected with your family. This martial art is not only to, only to progress the martial art community of Native Americans, but also to motivate others to stay healthy. I mean, that's really what, what, we're, what martial art basically is. It's a lifelong student. And just for the sake of it, those of you who want to learn a little bit of a cool tomahawk movements, I'm going to go ahead and show you a few right about now. And also, knife tactics. Now, I may not be an Okichita warrior, I may not be an Okichita master, but I am a martial artist and I have looked up some other martial arts styles and I have been taught in other hand to hand combats of both, well, a battle axe of what we call a tomahawk and also a knife. So if you guys want to learn a little bit of that stuff, Go ahead and hit that like that hit that like button down there. Subscribe, share it to your friends, and let's go ahead and go with the skill. Yeah. First things first. One thing for sure. If you guys do have a tomahawk or an axe or heck, use a stick if from outside to practice this. So what you need to do is to make sure you grab the grip. You grip it right here with a strong grip at the handle. Don't be that person to grab it up here. Okay, never up here. When somebody else has a sharp weapon as much as, your, uh, much, much as yours, the best thing for your hands to be is not to be close to the weapon part. All right, up here is a no-no. This part right here is a danger zone. Don't go like, huh, 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 huh. and if somebody sees you holding your hand right here and they gonna, you try to block it, guess what? Your hand is gonna get caught and you gonna say, bye-bye fingers. Go like, ah! like, we go like this. You guys don't want that, okay? So, let's go ahead and go to this part. You gotta grab it down here. 
right here. It's okay to grab, it's not okay to grab it here or here or here, not close. Anything close to here, not good. Down here, where you can get a good swing, good power around it, sure it's heavy, but it's good enough for you to get a good grip and power into your slices. So, here we go. First things first, I'm gonna go to the head part. Find a mirror, find somebody you wanna fight against or find somebody you wanna spar against. Do not hit them, but find a mirror, face yourself like this, and then go for one strike, go like this, one. Keep one hand blocking, so you can block any attack or any hits that come in this way. Don't leave yourself wide open, go like, huh, huh. No, block. So, one, to the head. Two, to the head. Three, to the chest. Four, to the chest. Five, to the side of the leg. Six, to the other side of the leg. And then, straight down to the middle. And straight down to the middle and then come right back up, and then slice. So basically it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I'm gonna do a side view. Also best for you guys to keep in mind that this thing is heavy on the end. All right, so if you guys are not strengthened enough, your wrist and your hands, you don't have a good firm grip, work on that grip, okay? Because these things are no joke. And don't be playing around with these stuff. These things are no joke, okay? I'm a martial artist and I'm 21 years old. You guys don't want to play with stuff that's this sharp and you're like, I don't like five years old or 16 years old, all right? I don't want you guys going up there and doing it and then you say, Kevin Miss Dragon did it, and then you guys are coming back to me and I'm getting in trouble for it for showing this. No, I want you guys to do this at your own Risk, okay? You guys gotta have a, a parent, a legal guardian, give you something that will be easy for you to use, nothing real, not like this. This thing is mm, this thing is sharp. I'm not lying, this thing is real. Do not, and I do repeat, do not try this by yourself. If you are if you are a kid, do not try this by yourself. Please try with parental guidance. Next thing on the agenda is the knife. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, why the knife? I mean, obviously we all know how to stab. I mean, doing this isn't stabbing, okay? So, I'm gonna head and let you guys know. The same thing goes with the tomahawk, same thing. One thing you need to make sure you keep in mind is that when you're doing this, be sure to focus on the attacks you're using. Do not just go, huh, 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 and you're leaving yourself wide open. All right, there's a reason why you have two arms, people. Use that other arm to block, to strike, to hold, to slice, to hoop, ha, 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 Because I offer, for our spirits martial artists, you do not want to play with knives. All right, so don't play with knives. Now let's go into the lesson. I know you guys noticed the bandana, the bandana, showing my Native American roots. Now let's go ahead and do this. That stuff is advanced, okay? So don't try that at home. So, one thing. Back then, Native Americans, our people, my people used to actually use the blades pointed like this, also like this. So we have it both the back way and the front way. One thing you need to make sure you need to do is also practice how to transition, all right? So usually people go like this, you see in movies going like this. That's great and everything, but that's, that, that's not gonna cut it in a real fight. Because anyway, you've seen Bruce Lee fight, you've seen that Into the Dragon, you've seen that dude doing this, and all of a sudden he was going slow, Bruce Lee knew what he was doing, all of a sudden, boom, knocked the knife out of his hand, and he got his tail handed to him on a silver platter, with his thumb, bite it. Anyway, back to what I was saying. With the knife, you want to go ahead and go straight to the forehead, to the face. Two, three to the middle, and four to the middle, and again, to the legs, guys. Remember, remember when you go to the legs, go from... Four, four, five, five right here to one side of the leg, six to the other side of the leg, and then strike, all right? Oh, forgot to mention, with the tomahawk, you can also strike. It doesn't have to go like this, you can go strike like you do with a knife. Whew. Keep your guard up, too. keep your guard up, always keep your guard up. So translating to the Filipino martial art of the knife style, the Kali, but also effective. But anyway, let's go ahead and do a full, fa a full fast food. Matter of fact, just so you guys want to learn it yourself, I'm going to do it slow, just one more time. 
So here we go. And feel free to pause the video and then rewind it back. So I'm gonna do it both view, front view and side view. So don't worry. If you guys are, miss it, I will do it. You will at least you will repeat it and then do it. Huh. Anyway, here we go. So one, two, like an X. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's an eight. Now seven is striking, but eight is like this. One, two, come on. It's like, go eight and pop and come right back. All right, so eight, like that. So seven, pop, seven, pop, seven, pop. Now, keep that hand up, keep that guard up. Now, I want to go ahead and go fast, a fast view. So here we go. Now I know I might have added some extra stuff, but I was getting in my zone. Sorry. Anyway, do it your, your, your version, the easier version. Here he goes. All right. There we go. It's not that hard, is it? No, it's not that hard at all. Anyway, you guys gonna understand how to do this stuff. Don't play with knives. Okay? I'm a martial artist. I'm experienced. I know how to do this stuff. Please do not play with knives. Kids, do not try this at home. Don't go to your friend's house. Please practice with sticks. Trust me, sticks will help you understand how to do this stuff. If you are not comfortable with a knife, do this. Do what I said, what I said to the kids. Go outside, find a stick. There's a bunch of branches out there or find a wooden pole or something. Um, anything you can that matches up to a knife. That is great practice. That way you won't, you won't get as hurt as much with a real knife and nobody who is in your room or who is in the area will get hurt by you. And you won't get hurt by yourself as well. All right? You don't believe how many times I have to practice this thing and I accidentally messed up. So don't worry. So let's go ahead and figure out more about the history of the... Aha! So you thought I was going to skip it, did you? I was going to skip it. I was going to go ahead and go to the other part. Okay, let's go ahead and do the side view of the knife form, guys. Let's go ahead and do it. Bring them in a reminder. I'm very um, comfortable doing my martial arts skills with the blade, you know, either doing this way. I'm very comfortable doing it this way. That way I can get a better view of understanding how to see my opponent's attacks. So if they come at me, I can come in with a block, 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 grab, stab, slit, 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 ankle slap, slit, pull down, strike, and then finish your move. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys think that's too violent. Well, in a world of fighting, some people may not play by the rules. Some people are willing to fight to win. All right, I'm against killing, so I'm not really gonna like, you know. <laughs> My ancestors used to do that before. I, on the other hand, think that's disgusting licking the blood on the blade. But anyway, let's go ahead and go to the other part. Now, side view. Those of you who wanna know from the side view, here we go. So, one, Strike to the forehead, a strike to the head, two strikes to the forehead, two more strikes to the midsection, two more strikes to both legs, one for each leg. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, flow with it. Don't just go like one, two, three, and then four. That's great and everything when you're doing it step by step and you know, somebody's going fast, but if you guys really want to get the job done quick, be sure to do it quick. I'm not talking about one, two, three. Now I'm talking one, two, three, four. Ah, strike them, strike them. Here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, there are some blocking techniques you guys can use with a knife. But if you guys really want to see that part of the video or see that video, Go ahead and leave it in the comments below if you guys want to know how to block with a knife. I mean, I know you guys rather have a sword or rather have a good knife. But let's go ahead and be honest, guys. In a heat of battle, a knife is basically your best friend. All right? A gun isn't your best friend. Let me go ahead and tell you this much. If you guys are chased in the freaking woods by an assassin who has trained his skills of both a knife and a gun, and you guys are just being chased in the woods. He's shooting at you. He's shooting at you. All of a sudden, run out of bullets. He's just straight up chasing you, or she's straight up chasing you. 
And guess what? You're going into the woods, you're going zigzag and stuff like that. You need to find a weapon to fight this dude or girl, do that. And then what guess what happens? You find two things. Now y'all have a split second. And I do mean a split second to find that one weapon that will help you out in this fight. Now here's what you need to do. You need to think, which weapon? Which, which would you grab? Would you grab for the knife? Or would you grab for the gun? Now, those of you who might actually just think, okay, you know, uh, gun beats a knife, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna grab for the gun. But guess what, smart guy? That gun isn't loaded. There's a reason why whoever had that gun before dropped it because it was empty. You guys cannot pick up an empty gun. A gun will not help you in a fight, at least with a knife. If that thing is there, I don't care if it rusted or stuff like that. If it cuts, it's good, okay? And it's a goal. They don't know. Use it to strike them. Strike them down. Strike them. Don't go ahead and just go straight to finding a gun and you turn around and... And the guy's like, you do realize that gun was dropped, but you never pick up a drop gun. Because if a gun is dropped, they dropped it for a reason. There's no bullets in it. <sighs> anyway, back to the history. And I know you guys are saying, okay, this part, this is going to be, uh, uh, this, this is going to be boring. I'm not going to make it boring, okay? I'm going to bring it to an easier point where you guys can understand better. Anyway, let's go ahead and go on to the history. In case you guys also want to learn how to use the blogging knifing techniques, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like it, comment, share it, and let's go ahead and go to uh, oh no, not history. Whoa! Now, when it comes to Okijita, meaning of worthy men, the things you need to know is that they only have three weapons, and the three weapons are the tomahawk or battle axe. A knife, always useful, remember what I said, and the Gunstop War Club. Although I don't have the Gunstop War Club right now, so if I will get it, don't worry. I'll get it and I'll show a video about that. If you guys want to, show, want to see a video of that, go ahead and put down in the comments below as well. And tactics and stuff like that, again, down in the comments. Anyway, about the Okichita workout uh, training regimen and stuff like that. Basically, Okichita works on your core, core muscles because when you're in a fight, you gotta learn how to move or maneuver yourself around and learn how to basically be a gorilla. That's what people call uh, warriors back then who don't have any armor. So, warriors who don't have ar any armor will be considered uh, a gorillas. Basically, guys who are I mean, who lack in defense but make up for agility and quick skill and stealthy, like ninjas. Anyway, back to what I was saying, uh, also Shaolin monks. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, basically it works on your core, work on tactics, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. You guys understand that, right? Hand-to-hand -hand combat. So when you guys are in a fight, this thing will be very good, very good for you. Yeah, help out with your core. Make sure anybody else who's trying to think they can knock you down, won't knock you down. Work on tactics on how you can actually learn how to block, defend, strike, strike down like this, you know, all that stuff. And hand to hand combat. Anyway, that concludes this video. Shouts out to Okichita, Canada Indigenous Martial Arts for letting me do in this video. Thank you very much, guys. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys letting another Native American brother help you guys out in making this whole country, America, understand where the Native American roots of martial arts come from. And thank you guys so much for helping me out. Um, uh, thank you guys for so much for following me on Instagram. By the way, if you guys are not on Instagram, go ahead and link and follow that thing all the way there. And then subscribe to here and follow me on my Instagram, on my Twitter. And I hope you guys have a nice, beautiful day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Also send tips. You know, fitness tips. Even I know you guys are thinking, head of me is, look at you, dude. You don't you already have to, you already have fitness, dude. Do we really need to send you any tips? Look at you, you got six pack abs, you got you got biceps and triceps. Come on, dude. I mean, do we really need to help you out with that? Do we really need to give you I'm like you know stuff? And I'm gonna be like, heck yeah, come on guys, I'm trying to help you guys out, okay? So, <laughs> oh, by the way, I want to do a new thing for today, or at least for my videos. It's a Navajo Native American words for today. One for each video. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the word for today. Since this is my first time doing a Native American-based video, 
thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Today, the word is, and drum roll please. It is takla e. Yeah, I know you guys say anything. What? Takla what? In case those of you who are confused about that word, takla e. A takla e means one. All right, it's number. It's a word. It's a number. Okay, number also means numbers. But that is not what you guys supposed to learn today. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oops, I may have let that. So those of you who are our Native Native American speakers and Navajo speakers, I'm sorry if the words that popped up on the screen does not match how you spell it. I really have not got that down on my editing power yet, and I try my very best to, you know, try to get it right and try to get it to um, work and stuff like that. Uh, so I just put it the way, base like the best I can with the, with the editing powers that I have. I'm sorry if I have not lived up to it. I hope I soon enough I'll be able to like you know make the word sound better to my to my appeal. But anyway, that is what it is. Takla I hope you guys have a nice day. I want to say it out into the Native American Navajo type of way. Hokahe, and also Agone. Let's go. Yeah.